Amundsen, and I'm one of the technical directors in the FOSPA team uh, here at DICE in, in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, I'm here today to talk about uh, Balfi 4 and Frostbite and a really exciting opportunity and, and new thing that we've been working with uh, in Deep for. Uh, we've been working together for the last nine years. Uh, it's so, also all started back in, uh, with Balfi Field 2 in 2004. And we work very closely with uh, lots of teams at AMD. Uh, we work with the developer relations team, we work with the developer technology team, and also the driver team to optimize the drivers for all our different games. Um, we sort of focus on, on quite a few different areas. Uh, quality in our, in our actual game, to make sure that we actually use, utilize the GPUs and make sure our games look uh, great and runs really, really well. Uh, but also, well, standard stuff like pure robustness, make sure your games are stable at launch. Um, and uh, AMD has quite a lot of uh, uh, special features that we've been implementing over the years, uh, like uh, Crossfire, making sure it can run multi-GPUs very nicely, or, or Ifinity running on tons of different screens. Uh, and uh, uh, we've had some pretty cool events uh, that we've also been collaborating on, such as the BF4 announcement over at the GDC. Uh, we also have some have regular meetings with the uh, sort of key technical staff at AMD and the, the hardware architects, and we've been doing this for years and years. Uh, and it's always uh, amazingly fun uh, to sit down and, and talk with all of the architects about well, future hardware, our future software, our needs, and see how they uh, align and, and actually have an opportunity to affect the development on, on, on future hardware and make sure it really fits our games. One of the main things I'm going to talk about today is Frostbite. So Frostbite, and specifically Frostbite 3. Frostbite 3 is our uh, next generation engine, um, and our mission in the Frostbite team here at EA is to empower our game creators uh, and essentially just create great games. And Frostbite has evolved to become uh, the platform uh, across the EA for uh, doing well, shooters or RPG games or real time strategy games, uh, as well as racing games, and, and quite a few more. Uh, and it's really fun to see how. Uh, all these uh, different studios have been working together and, and starting to collaborate and share and we're using uh, Frostbite as a common platform. Studios like Ghost, a newly started studio in Gothenburg here in, Swe here in Sweden, and make, they're making Need for Speed, or studios like Bayer, there's an uh, epic uh, long history doing really cool um, RPG games, uh, as well as studios like Visceral, they did Dead Space uh, before, uh, all of them working uh, together uh, with Frostbite. Uh, and overall we have <clears throat> approximately 15 games in development with Frostbite. Uh, Dragon Age Inquisition is a massive RPG made by Bioware. Uh, Plants vs. Zombies is one of my, Garden Warfare is one of my absolute favorites, um, made by Popcap. And then we have the games we we're working together with uh, Lucasfilm on, and the Star Wars franchise is really exciting, such as Bal Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, Command and Conquer, a legendary franchise, an RTS game. You didn't really think that was possible in Frostbite, but yes, it's definitely possible. Um, Need for Speed uh, by Ghost and Criterion, uh, Mirror's Edge, uh, beloved franchises, franchise uh, that we're working on here at the Terra Dice, Mass Effect, uh, one of my most favorite sci-fi games, and of course Battlefield. And I'm here, I'm primarily going to talk about Battlefield here this time. So I'm just going to do some quick highlights uh, about Battlefield and some of the key features of it in Battlefield 4. So Levolution is a new concept that we have in Battlefield 4, which is how we can affect entire levels, how we can uh, have a giant skyscraper uh, based on player action completely fall apart and affect uh, how the gameplay is done on, on, on the rest of, for the rest of the round on, on that level, or how an entire level gets uh, flooded uh, while you're playing it. Um, it's, pretty, it's pretty awesome to, to play in, in, in an environment and seeing that happen. Um, we also have uh, spent a lot of time working on, on a cool solution for network game, network water simulation that we're using in our multiplayer, um, as well as the simulator. So you can have a 64 player match of, of people racing around in, in boats of various types and aircraft and all interacting uh, uh, with the water. A key area for us has always been VFX, uh, which things like destruction and just particles in general, and we continue to push, the, push forward there in Battlefield 4. And a key part of this also is something we, we added back in BF3, BF3 that we refined uh, further is to utilize the compute uh, on modern GPUs to do our lighting in, inside compute shaders. So we can have lots and lots and lots of particles and light sources all interacting and creating these really dynamic and visceral environments. And to top it all off, uh, once we have our rendered pictures, we have a lot of different uh, post effects. And we've been improving this uh, quite significantly in BF4 of doing Pokey depth of field, uh, skin subsurface scattering, and, and uh, a lot more accurate uh, velocity uh, object motion blur, uh, as well as uh, the super sampling uh, for absolute highest quality uh, rendering. From a um, tech point of view, uh, we've really optimized the engine 
for DirectX 11.1 and for Radeon GPUs together with AMD. We've been working closely on this for, for quite some time, both on the CPU side and on the GPU side. Uh, optimizing shaders and uh, optimizing various rendering techniques or just uh, helping to uh, improve parallelism in the engine. And we also <laughs> managed to get uh, Microsoft to uh, add some really good optimizations in DX 11.1 uh, that improves our CPU utilization further. Uh, this is active and running under Windows 8. And for the first time ever uh, for Battlefield, we're doing a 64-bit uh, native executable uh, for, um, for the game uh, when you're running it on a modern uh, CPU. Uh, this improves um, performance, especially on our highly vectorized codes, such as the water that I mentioned, and uh, in general, it allows access to a lot more memory. And we're also spending quite quite significant amount of time paralyzing the engine further in order to scale up up to eight core CPUs. Um, and this scalability also well affects graphics overall. We can scale uh, from running the game from anything on like an uh, in the APU on the on the lower end side uh, to a, a big multi GPU system. So we've been focusing on building a lot of scalable uh, solutions with uh, inside Frostbite that all of the artists and level design have been, been using um, to great effect. PC in general uh, is really an amazing platform, I think, uh, to work for, and it has a lot of really unique strengths. You mentioned the scalability of going from the absolute lowest end to the, to the absolute highest end, like in this case, uh, uh, it, our dual 7990 uh, machine uh, as a really high-end quad GPU uh, desktop. A DICE PC is really in our DNA, I would like to say. It's sort of where we come from uh, with Delphi 942, which was a PC-only uh, multiplayer shooter that we owe, we owe our success to. And we, we as a studio strongly believe in and will continue to uh, support PC as a, as a gaming platform. But there are a lot of challenges on developing on PC also and, and releasing big games as what we're doing. Uh, yeah, uh, one major one is performance. Uh, I mentioned the scalability aspect. Um, <clears throat> there's also lower level uh, aspects of uh, uh, how you work with uh, DirectX 11 and, or, or OpenGL. It, it can't really utilize all the CPU cores with, with your rendering, which is a big problem for us. We want to have really complex scenes. <laughs> lots of draw calls, lots of interesting dynamic environment, and this is a significant bottleneck. Um, uh, from a programmability point of view, PC is well, it's easy to develop for on the CPU, but programmability when it comes to GPU is quite difficult. It's sort of still stuck in a model um, where, where a, a traditional model where the CPU is essentially spoon feeding the GPU with, uh, with commands, and memory is something that's hidden away from you. Uh, that makes uh, collaborating between the CPU and GPU very, very difficult. And also, yeah, not all functionality of modern GPUs is exposed. Uh, another key challenge on PC is the hardware and software uh, abstractions. Uh, having abstractions is really necessary uh, because, well, you, have, you need to have, be, able to have, be able to have a scalable PC. Uh, in, in, you know, that runs on different hardware, different graphics cards, and different GPUs, and different memory, uh, or different form factors for, for, for that matter. But these abstractions uh, are really coming in, in the way for us quite, quite a bit, uh, getting in the way for us quite a bit. Uh, we want to be able to adapt our use cases um, and, and our game engine to what the hardware is capable for, uh, not sort of limited uh, based on just what the, the software allows us to do. Uh, we have a lot of information in our engine and a lot of knowledge about our scenes because, well, we're simulating these entire game worlds. We know what we're going to render. Uh, we know what will happen, well, not all the time, but we <laughs> know ahead of time. We have a lot of really important information that we can base high performance decisions on. Things that we can implement more efficiently uh, if we were able to. Uh, things that the, uh, the OS or the graphics driver or, or the API can't really predict and has to go through a slower path for. And we're also feeling that uh, these APIs uh, that we're working with on PC and these abstractions overall, they're sort of, they're not really evolving fast enough for us. Uh, and all of this together sort of limits the type of game scenes that we can uh, create on modern computers. So, as a contrast, on the consoles, we, of course, develop all then only for a single specific uh, system setup uh, and system configuration, uh, where, where we really, really know the hardware components. Uh, and all, almost all of it is exposed to the developer, uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, and you combine it with a low-level overhead and very, very thin graphics driver, and explicit control for, our, for us uh, to memory, uh, where, and where we can explicitly control memory, makes it a lot easier to, uh, for us to, to develop and, and work on, uh, on the consoles and target and actually achieve the, the target frame rate that we're trying to get to. Um, and we have lots of experience doing this on well, both the previous generation consoles and the new generation of consoles. Uh, so what we really want on PC is to be able to, we want to be, we want to be able to push the sort of PC industry forward and make awesome games. Uh, 
of these massive, massive uh, dynamic and immersive worlds uh, with photorealistic visuals um, and not be constrained uh, by software limitations. Uh, we want to utilize the, the hardware fully. Uh, so what, really what we want is sort of the best, best of both, the best of PC and the best of, of console, while at the same time keeping scalability and uh, the, the ability to run on, on tons of different types of PCs. So what's required, in my view, uh, is a quite different approach to graphics APIs and drivers. Um, a, a different approach where the game engine, Frostbite in this case, uh, uh, takes on a lot, a lot of responsibility that the graphics driver currently has today. Uh, and the graphics driver becomes more of a thin abstraction uh, layered on the, on the hardware. Uh, the key aspect there is that we really need to have control over memory uh, and, and, and hardware components. Um, so I've been talking about this type of approach for years. Uh, we'll, uh, with the various graphics vendors, and I'm finally uh, really happy to be able to announce and be able to talk about that we're, we're working with AMD on a solution for this, and it's called Mantle. Uh, so Mantle is exactly what I wanted, a low-level, high-performance, uh, console-style graphics API for PC, for Windows. Yay! Uh, <laughs> uh, it's being built by AMD uh, in close collaboration with us, uh, and it's the direct result of, of these discussions that we've been having. And the intention is going to be cross-platform, which is really, really important for us, uh, but Windows initially. Um, and Battlefield 4 is the pilot project and sort of first, first use case uh, of uh, Mantle. Uh, and the key idea there is to, for gamers to be able to get absolute best performance when running on AMD hardware. So what we're building in Frostbite is a, a native rendering backend uh, using Mantle uh, instead of DirectX uh, for, for Windows. And the idea was that this, was, this will be used when having a compatible Radeon GPU uh, and having this enabled. It's being developed right now uh, with AMD and myself uh, here at Dice. Some of the things that this will uh, enable is for us to be able to get really superb uh, CP performance in Valve 4. Uh, very low overhead rendering uh, with Mantle, uh, as well as uh, how we load our levels and how we stream content in general. We can uh, render everything in parallel uh, on the CPU, the one of the key limitations of DX and GL, and this can be, we hope to be able to get perfectly linear scaling here and utilize all eight CPU cores. And this will enable us to sort of avoid bottlenecking uh, the game and the engine on just sending commands to, to the GPU uh, and the overall system that matter. We'll also be able to have, uh, get really highly optimized uh, GPU usage uh, because we have uh, full access to all of the functionality of the GPU and uh, that enables a lot of different, uh, a lot of areas of the low level optimizations. And this is really a foundation for the future for us as well. Uh, and only the beginning. We have lots of Frostbite games in development, as I mentioned, and each session will be key initial use cases that we have. We have a lot of ideas going forward. Um, so, to summarize a little bit about Battlefield 4, uh, it's going to be launched in, in, in end of October. Uh, we have 64 player multiplayer. While we're developing this highly optimized mantle render, um, Battlefield 4 will, of course, also have a, have a DirectX 11 render, uh, uh, which is the main one that we'll be launching with uh, on, in the end of October. Uh, and we also have great Crossfire and uh, Affinity support. And then in December, we'll be releasing a uh, update for Battlefield 4, uh, which contains the Mantle support. And we're super excited about that because that's that's the first time where gamers will be able to get the absolute most out of their uh, their PCs and their region GPUs. And we should be able to see some really good performance uh, in improvements uh, with that. And it's a free and automatic update. And I hope you all will enjoy it. Um, so. Going forward, uh, I'm super excited about Mantle, uh, and I'm looking forward to be able to share more details about it in the upcoming months. Uh, we have tons of ideas of, of how we want to be able to utilize this. Everything from being able to have a really low latency uh, multi-GPU render for, for VR, uh, to be able to do game worlds that sort of live only on the GPU, and then uh, updated there with all the teraflops of, of the compute capability that you have. Uh, I'm really looking forward to investigating and, and talking more about all of this. So, thanks. <laughs>